Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Kara Jensen. I am a health coach at Revere, at the Revere Health Weight Loss Nutrition Center. Um, today, our topic is going to be a little bit different. It was going to be um, exercise and nutrition and like what to do while on vacation, but because that topic may be a little bit irrelevant at this time with um, COVID and the pandemic and quarantine orders, um, social isolating, we decided to do exercise and nutrition while in quarantine. So even though we are not necessarily or technically um, in a lockdown order here in Utah, um, we are still practicing um, kind of what would be quarantine. Um, so just wanted to go through different barriers. So in this video, I want to list some barriers that we may be having um, with our health goals at this time. And I want to offer some solutions to those barriers. So some barriers that I wanted to touch on today uh, is lack of motivation, maybe emotional eating, boredom eating, Maybe you're not sure what to eat at this time, a lack of structure, maybe your gym has closed, maybe you're struggling not being able to see us as health coaches as regularly as you normally do. Um, so I wanted to go through and give some solutions to those and some other things. I wanted to share a quote with you that I love. It says, it's by Victor E. Frankel, um, somebody who survived the Holocaust. And he says, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So I really like that. Again, when we, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So that kind of reminds me of a quote that my grandpa used to always say to us grandkids. He would say, don't complain about the things you can't change. <laughs> So with our situation right now that we have going on um, with this pandemic and this virus, uh, we can't really change the situation, but we do have power still over ourselves and we can still focus on ourselves and still can improve ourselves. So that's what's most important is that we need to first accept what is happening. Just accept it uh, rather than complaining about it. Uh, we can't change what it is except what's going on. Second, stay focused. Realize that your life is not on pause. I've been hearing that a lot, saying like, oh, everything's on pause. Everything's just canceled right now. We're just on pause. Life is on pause. Um, life is not on pause. Uh, we still have complete control over ourselves and our actions. Um, and we need to, third, know what our barriers are. So, yes, there may quite possibly be some new barriers and things that are making it difficult to reach our goals while in quarantine and we need to identify what those barriers are so that we can have more power over them, right? We can take control of the situation. Um, and then lastly, uh, be in solution mode, not reactive mode. So it's very easy to just kind of be in reactive mode. Okay, it is what it is. I'll, I'll get back on track when or I'll put this on pause now. Um, but we want to make sure we're in solution mode, right? making the best of our circumstances. Okay, so now diving into our barriers. The first barrier that I wanted to talk about is a lack of structure. So having a lack of structure um, can be a barrier with our weight loss goals, and that is um, especially a barrier right now. Um, maybe you have kids at home, the structure or the routine and the schedule that you once have have once that you once had is kind of thrown out you're kind of now being um, you're now needing to create this new routine this new schedule this new um, structure um, don't touch your face so some solutions to that um, remember that your daily success relies on your routine um, this is regardless of whether we're in quarantine or not we're in quarantine. You need to have a routine. Your daily success relies on your routine. That's why us health coaches so often try to help you create 
a routine for you, specific to you and your lifestyle, because when you create that routine, you can create success. So um, a solution that we can start focusing on right now is creating at least a one to two hour morning and night routine. So your night routine should help prepare you for your morning routine. So we're all, every all the things that we're trying to do, we're trying to um, help our routine um, be more uh, easier for us, work for us. Um, don't touch your face, itchy nose, allergies. Um, we need to be specific and detailed with the schedule. So for example, with the one to two hour schedule, say you wake up at eight, maybe let's Let's start our routine at 7.30. So it needs to be as specific as we can. Make it. So 7.30, wake up. 7.30 to 8. Brush my teeth. Get ready for the morning. Make my bed. 8 to 8.30 is when I exercise. 8.30 to 9 is when I prepare uh, my breakfast. Right there is your one and a half hour routine. And you're already starting your day off on the right foot. And then let's say we get to your nighttime routine. Um, that nighttime routine should be okay at 8 o'clock, I wind down. 8.30, I lay out my gym clothes, my workout clothes for the next day. Um, I set my alarm. There's your, I read a book. I wind down. I write down my goals and my meals for tomorrow. You're preparing for the next day. Okay. So the next barrier that I wanted to talk about was meal planning and meal times. So uh, with being in quarantine, it it can kind of be easy to just go with the flow. You know, you're home all day. We're just eating when we want. Um, it's still important that we hold to our meal times and our meal plans. Um, now, this may work for some, may not work for others. Maybe you like to be more intuitive throughout the day. Um, however, if this does work for you, it can be a, a very beneficial to start it back up while I'm in quarantine. So. What we want to do is create meal time. So for example, breakfast, and this goes into what I was saying before with creating a structure and routine. Breakfast, breakfast from 8 to 8.30, I want breakfast. Lunch is gonna be sometime from noon to one. And give yourself kind of a time range because then you can be more intuitive. Say you're not hungry at noon. Well, you've got until one to eat. Um, say you're gonna have plan for dinner around five or six and plan for that last little snack around seven. That's just an example. Um, and then creating your meal plan. So if you have, let's say you're on a 1200 calorie diet, 12 to 1300 calorie meal plan. Um, whatever the health coach gave you, they should have given you a range of calories if you are tracking calories. Um, but creating a meal plan and then creating uh, specific calories to eat at each meal. So for example, a 12 to 1300 calorie meal plan can say, you know, I'm going to have 350 calories at breakfast. I'm going to have 350 calories at lunch. I'm going to have 400 calories at dinner and one to 200 calorie snack. Again, we're trying to keep structure and routine because we're in quarantine. <laughs> Didn't mean to rhyme, but we're trying to keep as much structure as we possibly can um, and as much routine as we can because this is this is your health and this is important and um, this can be a great way to help structure um, the way that you're eating. Okay, but then that leads me to my next point, my next barrier, boredom. We might be a little bored right now. We can't go to the store, we can't go shopping, we can't go out to dinner, we can't go out with friends, we can't go bowling, we can't go on vacation. Like there's there's a lot we can't do. We actually can't do anything. We need to be at home, right? what we're being told to go home and go to the grocery store one, maybe every other week uh, for necessities. So boredom can definitely be a barrier at this time. So here are some solutions. Um, I think it's the most important time right now to really pay attention to your hunger. So if you watched a couple uh, presentations back, we talk about the hunger scale. We talk about the hunger scale very often. Um, and it's really important that you are paying attention to the hunger scale right now. One of the things I tell my patients a lot is to use your finger, um, and if you can feel hunger, if you're wanting to go eat, point. You know, can you physically feel your hunger in your stomach? Point to your stomach. If you cannot feel any hunger, it's probably boredom. It might be in your head. Um, 
and this is the time to come up with a new hobby. So find a hobby, take advantage of this time and learn something new. Maybe go learn a new language, uh, YouTube and something, a documentary on, on YouTube. Um, call a friend, watch a show, read, start reading a book. Um, eating is definitely fun, but remember that when you're done eating, you're gonna be bored right after. So it's important that we can find entertainment and um, enter entertain ourselves and be content uh, without needing to go to food um, every time we're bored. Uh, the next barrier I wanted to talk about is physical activity. So my physical activity, my, my husband's physical activity has decreased and for a lot of reasons. Our physical activity and our exercise has decreased because we're not running errands. Um, we're not able to go to school, to work. Um, we can't, our, our gyms are closed, parks are closed. And so this has decreased our physical activity. So yes, it's gonna be more difficult at this time to get our physical activity in, but it is just as important, if not more important than before to make sure we're getting our uh, exercise and physical activity in. We need to still make sure that exercise and movement is a non-negotiable priority right now. Um, but remember, we're not exercising to burn calories. It's not the point of exercising. Um, Exercise should not be our number one way of losing weight or being healthy, but exercise, in fact, burning calories is probably the least um, important thing that exercise does for you. Uh, the reason why we should all be exercising at this time is because if you're in a slump or you're not feeling motivated, exercise is like that free happy pill that you can go take right now. You can go on a walk outside and get um, those happy endorphins going and you can you'll start to feel motivated. And so exercise, when my patients come to me and they are feeling in a slump and they're not feeling motivated, one of the first things I like to touch on is exercise because that's gonna give you those motiv motivation endorphins, those happy endorphins, those um, that motivation to keep going. So if you're feeling like you're lacking motivation at this time, really, really focus on um, exercise. Um, the next thing I wanted to touch on is emotional eating. So kind of along with boredom eating. So if you find yourself emotional eating right now, um, at this time, because, you know, anxiety levels are high, the unknown, we're not sure what's going on. Um, it can be very easy with different emotions and these different world events going on to start experiencing some emotional eating. Emotional eating is completely normal. Um, to some degree, it's okay to do. But if it starts getting out of control and taking over your life, um, then it's something we should probably take a look at. Um, it's uh, some okay. So this is what we're gonna do. If you are struggling with emotional eating, first thing I want you to do is try to label your emotion. So a lot of times, why we emotionally eat is because we feel an emotion, we don't know what it is, and we want to numb it with food. And we we turn to food and we eat the food, and it numbs it and then we feel a little crappy after, but then life goes on, right? And then the emotion comes again, and then we turn to food. So it's really important that we can label and try to identify what that uncomfortable emotion is. What do we not like to feel? Are we not liking to feel, are we feeling angry, anxious, pressured, nervous, worried? Are we feeling excited? Are we feeling ignored? Um, what is that emotion that you're trying to not feel? Um, and then the next thing I want you to start journaling. Journaling can be really helpful at this time while in quarantine, especially if emotional eating is high because it'll help you identify patterns. So with the journaling, you can journal, okay, I'm emotionally eating at this time. You might find a pattern that it's a certain time of day or it's a certain place in the house or it's a certain conversation that's being held or it's a certain person that you talk to. Um, anyway, start to notice patterns. Um, if this is a continual problem, bring it up to our health coach. Let's get you in talking to one of um, our therapists. They can really help you with this um, with this more in depth as well. But right now, just try to be aware of what um, be, take control of your emotions. Be, try to try to um, be more powerful than than they they really are. Cause they really hold no power. We just have to know what, what's going on and know what they are. Okay, moving on to the next barrier is food options and limitations. So we're at home and maybe we just don't know what to eat, right? Um, so some solutions, remember Walmart, Walmart pickup is free. 
Okay? So you can go on your phone and order Walmart pickup and go pick it up for free and load in your cart. You don't have to go expose yourself. And you could you could literally um, do Walmart pickup for tomorrow and get everything you need for a new recipe or a new dinner that you want to make tomorrow. Um, Costco has delivery. It's a little bit more expensive, but they do deliver. Um, Walmart does delivery as well. Um, so those are just some options uh, for you. Uh, and plan meals ahead. So, for example, tonight, plan for tomorrow. Okay, again, we're all we're trying to create this structure. Again, we're trying to create structure in our, in our goals in our life. Um, oftentimes, lack of planning is what leads to environmental eating. I don't know if you ever go into the kitchen um, and we just start eating everything in sight. That's what environmental eating is. We see it and we eat it. A lot of times we go into the kitchen and we're hungry. So we wait, and we, we wait to eat until we're extremely hungry and we go into the kitchen and we want to eat and we just start eating what's in sight because, um, because of that lack of plan. We don't, we don't know what to eat. We're just hungry and we want to fuel our bodies. So try planning in advance what you're going to eat before the hunger strikes um, to prepare yourself. And I would, try to, I would try to avoid going into the kitchen Right when you're in quarantine, try to stay out of the kitchen. Try to spend more of your time out of the kitchen, and then go into the kitchen to plan your meals and to eat. Um, and then when you're done, close the kitchen down. Go do something outside the kitchen. Um, okay, some healthy snacks that I wanted to point out is remember protein, edamame, some almonds. You can make some. some beef. beef jerky is a great high protein meal. Um, get some vegetables. Uh, we've got a lot of great resources on um, healthy food if you just watch a few videos back. The next barrier, I'm almost done. This video is 17 minutes, I'm not gonna wrap it up. Black and white mentality. So all, like all things with weight loss and with our goals, it's really important that we stay clear of this black and white mentality, right? It's a trap. As soon as you start to think, I'll focus on my goals when blank. That's a red flag. We should, we should, we should, we want to be focusing on our goals at all times, um, as if as if this pandemic is going to go on for another year, it shouldn't stop us. We should get get rid of that black and white thinking. Um, so try to avoid extremes. Try to catch this thinking. Try to smash it. Um, exercise and nutrition is important now more than ever. We want to be building our immune system. We want to be moving. We want to build our quality of life. We want to feel better. Um, so try to get rid of that black and white thinking. That brings me to my next point. Gym closes. So maybe the one your one way of exercising was going to the gym and now your gym has closed. So you can't exercise. Remember that that's another black and white mentality, right? That's that mentality of, oh, I can only exercise if this, right? So we want to smash that mentality. And there are tons of solutions to at-home workouts. You can YouTube at-home workouts. Um, fitnessblender.com is a great um, at-home workout resource. Uh, you can go walking outside. Still make sure you're social distancing. If you go on a walk or a run or a hike outside, make sure you're keeping that six feet distance. Um, you can jump rope. You can do a medicine ball. You can get a kettlebell and do kettlebell swings, or you can do squats with the kettlebell. You can get canned foods and do some like arm raises with the canned foods. You can get a pot, pots or pans. I've been seeing people do pots and pans, and the weight distribution kind of makes um, strength training uh, work a new way. You can go on a walk. Like I said, you can do body weight movements. Plyometrics are great. Push-ups, squats. Um, my favorite way, to, favorite way to work out right now is just setting your timer for one minute and doing an exercise move for one minute. And then when your timer goes off, set it again. Do something else for one minute. You can do anything for one minute, and it kind of helps the workout go a little faster. Um, add this exercise to your detailed schedule that we're trying. We're going to start making right your morning schedule and your evening schedule. Uh, the next barrier that we might have in Utah is bad weather. <laughs> that can be. Thankfully, it's so sunny and nice outside in this whole week. But last week was a little bit difficult. It was. It was. It was snowy and it was cold. Um, and so again, this is black and white mentality. Oh, I can't do my goals now. I'll do it when blank. Um, we want to get rid of, rid of that mentality, avoid, avoid avoiding extremes and just 
just doing a little bit, right? Doing something is better than doing nothing. So try to keep that mentality with this whole um, quarantine thing that we're going through. Um, I did want to say that in my little apartment, I got 9,000 steps the other day cleaning out my back room. So I just totally organized it, cleaned it, um, got rid of stuff, went through it and vacuumed it. And I got 9,000 steps. And I was just thinking that that's a great way of getting my physical activity up is cleaning the house. So maybe cleaning the house can be something you do when there's a uh, bad weather, vacuuming, mopping, um, organizing, cleaning out. Um, also take advantage of this because, um, health and weight loss, whatever your goal is, is there's, it's so much more than just exercise and nutrition. Um, health is mind, body, and spirit, right? Um, it's not just body, your mind and your, your mind and your spirit, uh, they are just as important as focusing on your body. Um, and so if it is bad weather outside, maybe take advantage and focus on your mind, read a book and learning, learn something new or focus on your spirit and start journaling, uh, focus on your social health and call a friend. So, um, those are just, uh, ideas to help you get through this little, little funk. I don't even know. It's kind of weird time right now. Weird, weird, weird time. I think we're all on the same, same boat right now. Weird time. But I know it's going to, it'll, it'll, it'll pass. And I think that you will, your future self, your future post quarantine self will thank you and will be very, very grateful for yourself right now. If you keep to your goals, if you are having that black and white mentality of like, I'll bag this, I'll get back on track when blank, um, you can do that, but I promise your future self will thank you if you put in the work and you just continue to do. And remember, the the benefits out the benefits outweigh um, the 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 barriers. So that is all I have to say. I hope you guys all have a great um, Wednesday. It's Wednesday, and I miss you guys. I miss everyone. I I'm uh, a few of us. Um, a few of us can't go into work right now and, uh, we miss our patients. We all miss seeing you, um, in person and we're excited to one day be able to help you again in person, but till then we'll keep, uh, tele doing telehealth with you and telemedicine, but yeah, uh, have a good, good week and let's, let's stay on track. Get out those goals that those health coaches printed off for you and let's try to stay on track as, um, best as we can and keep Keep on keeping on, doing a little bit every day.